And we are back on The Rodriguez, the Rodriguez show, show, and we have our special guest for this episode, returning for the first time since 2019, Devro. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. How's everyone doing? How are you feeling? I'm great. I feel a little tired, but I drank a Juneberry Red Bull. If you guys haven't tried that one, it's so good. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling all right. I have my tea here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So usually we record on Tuesday nights, but today, because uh, you're in town for the Cool Lap Fest, we're recording on a Friday morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, when the show is the, the other episode of the show is airing right now, uh, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been like a few years since you've been here. How, how have you been? Man, it's been a whirlwind. I like moved to Vegas. I've been performing with a band now, um, working on my first album, mm -hmm. which people have been asking me for for like years. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to finally do that with a purpose. Um, just like learning a lot of lessons, trying to keep to myself and build the right circle around me, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, moving to Vegas. How long have you been there now? I've been there since last January. Damn. It doesn't feel that long, but it has been. That's crazy to me. What prompted the move? So my cousins that I'm like really close with, they moved out there. They got a house out, out there, actually. Mm -hmm. So I went and moved out with them. We were just vibing for a while. It's so cool out there because their backyard is so huge. We have like chickens in the back. They have like a bunch of animals. We have like two tortoises just walking around. Oh, so I'll God. just go out there and just chill, look at the trees, just listen to everything. It's amazing. Yeah, how, um, uh, how, do you, how close do you live to like the strip and stuff? I would say like 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay. So but like, I stay away from the strip. Yeah. I'm like, I'm too small. I'm not trying to get kidnapped. Not happening. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, what's the music scene out there? Have you had a chance to perform? Um, I have been performing, actually. I think maybe a month after I moved out there, a promoter hit me up and was like, hey, we want to have you on this show. So I've been doing that pretty consistently about every other month I'll perform. And I just performed with the band that I put together out there, I would say, last month. Oh, okay. So we're kind of building things up. Um, it's a lot of rap. There's, like, a lot of rappers... Not really my vibe, I would say, but um, it's definitely a different scene. But what I did notice is here, like in California, people are very supportive. Like artists support each other. They're like, yeah, you're dope. Out there, it's like if you try to support another artist, they're kind of like, what's wrong with you? Like, Oh, like you're go and sus. talk to them and stuff? Yeah. That's weird. Like, they're kind of just like standoff or something. Like, I'm just a fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's unusual. Um so, yeah, one of the things, so, like, in, being in Vegas, uh, obviously, you, we talked about it before we started recording that you're working on, on your prod, the album that you're working on, but mm -hmm. how did, did your creative process change? Like, were you like, oh, like, do I, I have more time now? I have less time? I would say in Vegas, there's, like, a lot of less distractions because I don't know as many people there. Uh, so I would say it's given me a lot of alone time to just, like, think and ruminate on my thoughts and figure out what I want to speak about when it comes to the music because I feel like before especially when I came on the show before, I was making like a lot of music because I felt the pressure from the music scene. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want to show out. I want to be my best. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I need to take a break from the ego and I need to focus on like what's going on in the music. What message am I giving to people? What are they taking away? Um, things like that, you know, yeah. just something to make people feel good. Did you, did you, did you figure it out? Like what, like what you're trying to do with it? I did. I honestly will lock myself in my room for like seven plus hours just with my laptop and my microphone and I'll just be recording demos just all night and then by the next day I'll like wake up and I forget how many demos I make and I'll look back and I'm like damn I'm really productive in here that's awesome so <laughs> that's great yeah it's giving me a lot of time to create yeah that's dope and one of the things like you mentioned you you put together a band how did that mm -hmm. how did that come together so the promoter that put me onto the shows out in Vegas I was like you know, I like to perform with a band. It's fun to perform with a track, but now that I've performed with a band because of my manager, David, I'm like, I just like how it sounds so much better. It's a better vibe. People like it more. Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe we could put together a band, but I don't know anybody. He's like, I got you. So he like picked some people out. Uh, we kind of tested it out with our first show. We we're like, all right, some of these people don't work. Um, I auditioned like some background singers and some people from UNLV. Mm -hmm. And they just killed it. I was like, oh, you guys are awesome. So nice. we kind of got the, the skeleton of the band now. We have a bassist, a guitarist. We have the drummer um, and a keyboardist. Nice. And then I have one background singer. He's actually from here. He moved out to Vegas, too. His name's Sean Jay. So it's really nice to have, like, a piece of Cali back in yeah. Vegas, too. 
Yeah, I was lucky enough to see you guys perform at the the Pretty Papes party that he did in February oh, for Valentine's Day. It was Day. so much fun. Uh, was that was it the first time you performed with the band, or have you guys already done the? Few I years? think yeah, that was the first time that I performed with the band. Nice thing. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> how, until how was now. that for you? How did that feel? You said it was fun. Oh my gosh, it was. Um, I was so nervous, but we only had one rehearsal, and that was the first time I had met any of them too, which was like the day before, or maybe a few days before the show. And we rehearsed, it sounded really good. And then we kind of like rehearsed in the parking lot a little bit before the actual show started. But when we went up there, I feel like we killed it. Like, yeah. I don't even know. I just felt really good about it. Everybody else was dancing, especially when we did the Erica Badu song. Mm -hmm. I felt so happy. I like looked in the crowd, Pretty Papes was over there like, oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a great moment. Yeah, Thank and, you. And the cool thing was like, there was people there that had come just to see you. Like you had a crowd there just for you that, that's dope yeah <laughs> it, it, it made me feel really nice because i'm like in vegas i don't really pull a lot of people because i don't go out much mm -hmm. so there's not many people to be like oh i want to see Devereaux. Yeah. um but out here yeah i always pull in a crowd and it makes me so grateful because i'm like thinking back to when i was a kid and i'm like damn this is always what i wanted to do like this was my dream since i was like four years old and i'm actually out here doing it yeah. it's crazy to me yeah, well, congrats. That's, Thank that's you. a cool thing to accomplish. <laughs> uh, so how did you start working with David? So actually, David hit me up on Instagram. We've known each other for like three years now. And he wanted to work, but I was going through so much shit at the time. I just didn't have the time. And he would still check in on me, even if I couldn't make it or I canceled a session. He'd be like, hey, you good? Every few months or every few weeks. And eventually I was like, I really appreciate the fact that this person doesn't only care about the music, but he like checks up on me personally. So eventually I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make it out there. We're gonna work together. And we did a cover of a John Legend song. Oh, what was the song? Ordinary people, we're just ordinary people. Yeah, so we did a cover of that. And then it was just kind of like history from there. I was like, I really like your chill vibe. I'm very <laughs> like all over the place. <laughs> and he's just very, all right, this is, ready let's let's get it and we both work really fast together which that's my favorite thing if you can produce and record and like mix fast with you know the speed that i'm trying to go at we're golden we can yeah. knock so much out so we've been working together since then and uh we have like maybe four or five songs like skeletons of songs ready for the album nice nice so i'm excited for you guys to hear the two tracks that i'm going to show you later uh, yeah yeah those are going to be part of the album <laughs> Yes. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so one of the tracks, again, uh, you released recently. What went mm -hmm. into the making of that one? Oh, man, I love telling this story. So mm -hmm. I made this song in 2020. Originally, I wrote the song, and it was with my friend Soul. And he had made, like, a basic acoustic guitar, and it was just really bare, a really bare track. It was really sad, really slow, but I really liked it. And then... A few years later, I'm like, I haven't done anything with this, but it's so good. I love it. Everybody likes it. And I showed it to David, and I was like, maybe we could do something with this. And he just kind of took it and completely changed it, like brought in musicians to play different parts. They all did their own little spice on it. And uh, it turned out to be like it gave the track life. Nice. So it's been years in the making to put that track out and to finish that track, and I'm really proud of how it came out. That's, that's dope yeah well we're gonna hear it in a little bit um but yeah one of the so one of the reasons you're in town is for the cool lab fest uh how do you prepare for something like uh, that i'm gonna tell you right now i hopped on a flight over 24 hours of no sleep let me tell you that i right hopped now? on the flight um no but when i first got here okay. a few days ago hopped on the flight got here and then he picked me up we went straight to my first rehearsal with my guitarist uh, his name's fahim he's awesome and then after that, we got in the car. Where did we go after that? Did we have something after that? Podcast. Oh, we, and then we hopped in the car after the rehearsal, went to the podcast, the front row seat with Noah Alvarez, yeah. and um, finished that. I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but, you know, <laughs> I'm trying my best here. We had a fun time and then went back, tried to get as much sleep as I could, woke up again. We had another thing to do yesterday morning. And then another rehearsal last night with a full band for the Cool Lab Fest, mm. which, by the way, I'm so excited for that because that's literally where this whole, like, performing music started was with the open mic. So nice. this to me is like, oh, nice. I'm, like, going back and seeing all of my friends that I haven't seen in forever. Yeah. No, it's always exciting. When I saw you in the lineup, I was like, all right, I got to be there. 
Uh, and you're also doing a show tonight, right, in L.A.? Well, the day uh, that we're recording this is Friday. Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. And that is actually something that David and a few other of our friends curated. I'm really excited because I'm performing with Damon. I'm performing with my friend Kalissa. Um, and it's like a 20-minute set thing. It's very intimate, but each of us gets like an acu- acoustic 20-minute set to just showcase whatever we want to do. And they try to kind of bring in new artists every week or at least like one every week so we can just kind of keep that going. So we're trying to build that community up right now. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see what that's like in person because I've only seen it through his Instagram. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, I get to be a part of that too. Nice. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm really excited for everything that you're doing. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the, the Cool Lab, though. I'm sorry, we're going back to it because uh, okay. I'm all over the place. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so you, how did it start for you? Is it like you just went and then one day you're like, all right, I'm going to start singing? I know we talked about it in the past. But. Yeah, so um, I was actually going to Fullerton College for two years uh, from 2018 to 2019. I'm maybe a little bit into 2020. Um, and I had met a singer out there and I was like, I want to do what this person's doing. So he introduced me to the Cool Lab. Uh, he like brought me to the first open mic that I'd ever been to, and I like signed up to do it. And I just remember going up there. Everybody was so supportive. Like I, I knew none of these people. Like I was new. I moved from the Inland Empire, and I was just like, wow, everybody is so kind. Like everybody's so welcoming. Everybody's attentive and listening. Uh, and ever since then, I, I just I made it a habit to go all the time, even if I wasn't performing. I'm like, I'm just go vibe out with everybody. Like, I don't have anything else better to do, like show support. Yeah. And it just kind of grew from there because people would notice me and be like, hey, you want to be on this show? Hey, you should be on this show. Yeah. And it just kind of took off. So I give a lot of credit to the Cool Lab Project because that's kind of where I got my confidence. That's kind of where I was like, wow, I can really do something with this. And people actually want to hear it. Yeah. So. You know, I've done a little personal development in the years and kind of tightened up my vocals and what I want to do musically. So I'm excited to go back and, you know, the people that it, that were there when I was younger can kind of see the growth from 2018, 2019 to 2023, you know? Yeah. No, even now, even in the music that I've heard and the performances that I've seen you do, like since then, it's like it's such a great, you know, upward trajectory of what you're doing. So shout uh, out to you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to the Cool Lab, uh, Laws, uh, Rocky Angelini, and now yes. Sammy Love, the host of the show. I'm uh, so happy that she's the new host. Yeah. She's so perfect. Her energy is just everything. I love it. Yeah, oh. yeah she's great. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so you, you mentioned you're working on a project. What are you like focusing on for the rest of the year now that we're halfway through? Um, so we already put out our first single that it is going to be on the project. And it's again... We're actually working on our second one. We're just finishing up the mix. It's called Petite and Pretty. I'm also going to be performing that today. That's going to be our next single, also part of the album. And then we have about, I would say, like four other songs maybe that we're pretty much good with that we're going to uh, put out. But the main focus of this album has been, you know, you can be sad. You can go through heartbreak, whether it's like family, whether it's uh, friendships, whether it's boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. But... Instead of just, like, sitting in it, I noticed, like, a lot of my old songs were just, like, very sad girl. It was just, like, I'm depressed, and I got my heart broken. And uh, when I started making this new album, I kind of used demos from, like, old stuff. And I was like, I'm gonna just use the lyrics. Then I read the lyrics back, and I'm like, girl, you sound desperate as hell. Like, (laughs) I get it, you're young, but no, we're switching this the hell up. So um, I went through, I rewrote a bunch of the songs just to give it more of like a a confidence booster at the end. Like, yeah, you're sad, but what are are we going to do about it? Like, at the end of the day, you're going to pull yourself out of it, you're going to learn something from this, and you're going to grow and be happier, you know? So that's kind of the theme. And also, like, a lot of really pretty vocal harmonies. It's just very emotional, I feel like. And we do have a few fun ones, but I wanted to focus on, like, the slow, emotional R&B neo-soul vibes. So. Nice, nice. Uh, when do you think that's going to come out? Oof. I cannot give you... I'm not the type to give a date. I yeah. just want well, it to not, be not perfect. Date, but, yeah. but hopefully, sometime, like, maybe the end of this year, beginning of next year. Nice. I just need the time... We need the time to tighten it up because it's so good. I can't, I can't put it out without it being perfect. That no, makes sense. Yeah, you want it, you want it to be the best it can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, what about personally? Is there anything you're working on for yourself, like outside of music, that you're trying to like better? Mm, I would say just always, just keeping a balance of like mental health and like responsibilities in life, and just trying to keep that in check because sometimes it gets hard like there's so much going on it's very easy to get flustered or to forget what you're doing or forget what mission you're on 
sometimes I just have to like bring myself back and be like, you're kind of losing your focus. Let's get back to it. So personally, yeah, I'm just working on trying to find a balance and how to make myself the best that I can be. Yeah. Well, healing, like you said, like it says on your sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Damon. Yeah, nice. Trap heels. Uh, well, all right. Well, we're going to get into the performance before we do, though. We Yay. have a new segment for you because you haven't been here in a while. It's called Dope or Nope. We're just going to throw out these things. You're going to tell me if you think they're dope or nope and explain why. Okay. okay you ready? Uh, dope or nope with Devro. This is long car ride. Dope or nope. Nope. You don't like it? Uh, no. I have ADHD. I start getting pissed off, man. Like, I'm like, get me the fuck out of this car, please. <laughs> I mean, and besides that, every time I'm in the car, I feel bad for, like, other people because I just zone out. Like, I just use that time to think. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, they might be talking to me, and I'm just like, hmm, I wonder what I want to eat this. <laughs> like, it's <just> random. <laughs> So you so you don't you avoid uh, driving from Vegas to here? Is that you? That's why you fly. I yeah I av I try to avoid it, but sometimes you just can't. Yeah. As long as I get a few smoke breaks in between, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, casinos, dope or nope? Nope. No. no, I'm not a gam. I don't gamble. It's like why do I want to lose money that I don't have already? <laughs> I'm already a struggling artist. Like there's no need for me to be in a casino unless I'm performing. Yeah. I'm out. Right, I'm out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Astrology. Uh, I'm going to say dope. I don't know much about it, but when a pretty girl is like talking to me about astrology, I'm like, oh, yeah, I fucking love that shit, you know? <laughs> and it is pretty interesting. I have a few friends that really study that shit for like five, six years and just hearing about how much I'm like, I don't know if it's true. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm willing to listen. It's interesting to hear new perspectives. Yeah. So dope for me. <laughs> nice. Uh, Corona beer. <laughs> I don't really like beer, but like if I have to, I guess. So it's a nope. It's a no. <laughs> What's your drink? I think my drink would be weed. I don't. I don't really like drinking. <laughs> I try to stay away from alcohol, dude. No, I'm just like, fine. it makes sense. Nah. <laughs> Late night DMs. No, no. Uh, <laughs> like I'm at a point where I literally cut my hair short, and I was hoping so bad. I'm like, once I cut my hair short and I look like a boy, nobody's gonna. They're just gonna leave me alone. <laughs> it's actually the opposite. Yeah. I'm so pissed. I'm, so no, I'm gonna say no for that. <laughs> And then uh, topical Barbies, dope or nope? Oof, I'm, I'll say dope, but I'll be honest. I used to like abuse the fuck out of my Barbies. So maybe not for the same reasons as everyone else. <laughs> but I mean, I had fun. You know, they were like astronauts getting thrown across, getting thrown in the pool and shit, just crazy. Just cutting their hair hella short. Yeah. My Theo hated it. She's like, why do you do this? Why do I buy you these for this? I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was dope or nope with Devro. Uh, well, are you ready to do a couple tracks from uh, that you've released and one that's not released yet? Yes, I'm so ready. All right, for the first time since 2019 on the show right now, this is Devro. <laughs> so this is where it ends again. Star-crossed lovers, maybe we can meet again Had to leave some things unsaid Can't erase the things you said Cause I know my place, I rest My case, I can't let it go again I don't wanna fall How the hell did we fall off the end? I don't want to say that it's the end I don't want to be the friend again Those chimes are like my favorite Time I cried my tears Faced all of my darkest fears uh -huh. How'd I get so far from you? Uh -huh. But you'll still do the things you do Cause I fought for peace I fell 
too deep I won't let it go again I don't wanna fall away again And how the hell did we fall off the end I don't wanna say that it's the end I don't wanna be the friend again Ooh, 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 and pretty. This is for all my, my small girls like me. This is our new anthem. I can feel you caught in my energy. I can tell that you like it. You like it. I can tell by the way you look at me. Tell that you like it, you like it. I lost my life, try to give it away. Life has a way of shoving in my face. When I got the right thing, wrong time. Once my mental's all good, like spine. Putty in the pretty face, vow that you cannot replace. Want me so bad, you say. Want me so bad, you say. Want me so bad, you say. Put it in a pretty face. Put it in a pretty face. Be honest, I know you've been waiting for me. Playing in my head like a symphony. I can tell he's feeling me. The way he's wrapped up inside my energy. Intertwine and put it all on me Once you get me, you won't leave Intertwine and put it all on me Once you get me, you won't leave Intertwine and put it all on me Once you get me, you won't leave Pretty face, put it in a 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 pretty face, but that you can now replace, put it in a pretty face, but that you can now So bad you say, want me so bad you say, put it in a pretty face, put it in a pretty face. Devro on <laughs> the Rodriguez show. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you.